Hey friend, welcome to Grounded, the vestibular podcast. I'm Dr. Madison Oak, aka the Vertigo Doctor. I am the vestibular physical therapist who is here to help you with all things dizziness, imbalance, and vertigo. In this podcast, we explore the fascinating world of vestibular disorders. Come with me as we dive headfirst into a journey to discover the mysteries of the brain, the inner ear, and the balance mechanisms that keep us grounded. Whether you've been managing dizziness for one day or 25 years, we're going to get real about what it takes to manage dizziness, handle the anxiety cycle, and thrive, not just survive, with your vestibular disorder. First, I want to remind you that this is never medical advice. Remember, this podcast is for informational purposes only and may not be the best fit for you and your personal situation. It shall not be construed as medical advice. The information and education provided here is not intended or implied to supplement or replace professional medical treatment advice and or diagnosis. Always check with your own physician, medical professionals, and healthcare team before trying or implementing any information found here. Meet me in your coziest chair while we navigate the highs and lows, the twists and turns of the vestibular universe. Welcome to Grounded. Let's dive in. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Grounded. I have my favorite person on the podcast again today. Dr. Emily Gastalnik is back again because she's great. And also because we wanted to talk to you a little bit about inflammation today and a little bit about something we are putting on in October called the Vestibular Virtual Summit, which went live for presale yesterday. And this is the most affordable, best time to purchase it. So Get in on that. We're going to tell you why it's important and the things that we're talking about. Hi. Well, we are I'm really excited. Absolutely. I'm super, super excited. Um, so yeah, I guess we should dive in and talk about what it is, why it's relevant to vestibular disorder. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think you will see in the field, obviously it's a small community. You'll see different conferences and summits pop up. Maybe they might be vestibular specific or maybe migraine specific. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I think that what Dr. Madison and I noticed is it's a lot of the same things that are talked about kind of repeatedly. So whether that's medications and sort of like the CGRPs or kind of like the new kids on the block, um, maybe they'll talk about neuromodulation devices, maybe some dietary things. Um, but in my experience and in Dr. Madison's experience, and when I, when I say that, I mean professionally, but then me personally as a patient, a lot of these things don't either don't work for people. They don't get them to where they want to be in terms of functioning or symptoms. And so it was really, really important for us to think outside of the box and look at other data, other literature, like how can we pull from other chronic illness and and see how that's relevant for vestibular disorders. And honestly, that has been the biggest turning point for me in my personal experience, specifically with vestibular migraine and triple PD. Um, So that's sort of where the vestibular virtual summit or how it was born. Um, Madison, I don't know if you have any any other thoughts on that, but um, it's it's going to be a lot of things you haven't heard about. A lot of things probably like your ENT or your neurologist hasn't talked to you about. They might not know about it. Um, and it's even some things that people will say like, oh, they, they'll classify it as not evidence-based, um, which honestly is flat out untrue. So yeah. maybe it hasn't been studied in the context of vestibular disorders, but a lot of the treatments that people try have not been studied in the context of vestibular disorders. So yeah. I, I totally agree with that. And I think something that you said before, that like the new kids on the block or the CGRPs, those can be awesome. And we're not telling you not to take your meds. We're not saying like, don't do traditional medicine, ditch your neurologist, never see your ENT again. That's not what this is about. And I think it's just something that can be additive to your journey in the vestibular world. And these are people who we have like, gotten together because we trust them we know that they know what they're talking about and we want you guys to have the access to the people 
who know what they're talking about. You can see the right person the first time, not the 100th time. And you can kind of use all of the resources to determine what's best for you, whether it is a medication, whether it's a supplement, whether it's a newer protocol that you might not know about, whether it's something that might be in your home, like maybe mold, uh, maybe it's something you're dealing with, like Lyme disease that your doctor isn't super highly educated in. So there are a lot of things that you can you should consider. And these are the things that we have found like really go the last mile for our patients. Mm -hmm. I want to touch on that too. And I want to make sure I'm clear on that, that we're thinking about this as integrative wellness. So I want to just kind of emphasize what you said, Madison, of like, we're not saying either, or we're not saying ditch your neurologist. We're not saying come off of your medication. All of these things can be used in tandem. And that's how I think they they work best. So, and I'll talk, I'm going to dive into my whole integrative medicine story as part of the summit. I can give some kind of sneak peeks now, but I personally got to a place with vestibular migraine and triple PD where postpartum I had tried gabapentin and it wasn't that helpful. It was super, super sedating, even at the smallest dose. Like I couldn't care for myself and my child. And so it's like, that's not feasible. Um, from there, I'm trying to think of what else I tried, maybe some antihistamine type medications, again, pretty sedating. Um, then I tried Effexor, helpful, didn't get me to be where I wanted to be. So I still had that kind of background 24 seven dizziness. And I just got to the point where I was like, I don't want to try 20 different medications. I was kind of figuring out that I was becoming sensitive to meds and supplements and either I didn't tolerate them well, some of them made me feel worse. Um, And so I just started looking a little bit outside the box to see what else can I do without having to be on a merry-go-round of medications. Totally. Um, Totally. Yeah. And I want to highlight too, like we've really curated the people in the field that we trust that Mm -hmm. they're talking about. So like Madison said, we want you to see the right person the first time. So I can tell you right now in the sort of integrative wellness world, functional medicine world, I am currently on my sixth functional doctor. And that is a lot of time. It's a lot of effort. It's a ton of money. So a lot of, you know, a lot of functional stuff is out of pocket. And so I do not want people to go through what I went through where I Mm -hmm. saw the wrong people over and over and over again. And maybe those would have been great providers for other people, but they didn't hone in on the issues that I have that tend to be the issues that other people in this community have, which are histamine related, mast cell related, toxin, toxic load related, nervous system related. And so I find if you go to like, just like conventional doctors, different functional doctors have kind of their preference, their leanings. And so I would saw people that said, this is all because of your gut. Like all of this is because of poor gut health. But then they put me on these protocols with supplements that had a hundred ingredients in them. And I couldn't take any of them, not even a sprinkle. Or the next one said, this is all adrenals. Problem was when they put me with adrenals, they tend to like put people on precursors to hormones like pregnenolone. That's very hard to tolerate for people that are super sensitive. And so I, I really want to take the guesswork out of this for a lot of people like to get straight to the root of this is likely going to be the highest yield for you if you want to go this route. So do you, Madison, do you want to talk about some of the topics that we're going to cover? Yes. I pulled up our spreadsheet because every time I like go to talk, I I can't remember them all. (laughs) One time last week on, I think my story or maybe on last week's podcast, I I was recording something and I did all 10 in a row. And I'm so proud of myself, <laughs> but I don't think, I think it was a one shot only. I'll never be able to do it again. Yeah, we have some wanna... phenomenal speakers and some amazing topics. And some yeah. speakers, we were like, we're going to reach out to them and we'll never get them. And here we are. So it's yeah. going to be amazing. Yes. So the first day, so I'm going to go over my story and I know there's been a lot of requests for that. And a lot of people talking about like, what helped you the most, what supplements helped you the most, what meds helped you the most. And so I'm really going to break it down in a way that I never have before, like in any other content that you'll see online. Um, and then 
from there, we're going to talk about histamine intolerance and mast cell activation syndrome, which is absolutely foundational because when you're talking about things like migraine, like Meniere's disease, like anything inflammatory, which vestibular disorders are, there's actually some data to show that people with pretty much most vestibular disorders have higher inflammatory markers. Um, and histamine is an inflammatory chemical. And so I would say for the vast majority of the people in my private practice I've seen, if not all of them who have gone down this route and tried to explore more the histamine connection, this is relevant to all of them. Um, and this speaker is amazing. Like she's one of the best, I guess we can say who it is, yeah. um, Dr. Dr. Becky Campbell. So if you want to check her out, she's a doctor of natural medicine. She has multiple books out on histamine and thyroid, big, big connection there too. Um, mm -hmm. I don't, I'm probably not going to go into that too much today or in the summit because there's just too much else to talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, but histamine intolerance and mast cell activation syndrome is going to be in the beginning to kind of help lay the foundation for a lot of it. Mm -hmm. So really want excited. Me to, want me to go on? To yeah, you, do, you do day one, I'll do day two. <laughs> okay. So let me see. The next we're going to do is we're going to talk all about mold. And this one is... It can be controversial because in medical schools, this is taught, a uh, mold is taught as an allergen. Um, but what you're going to learn, we're going to talk to Dr. Tammy Lide, who is both shoemaker certified. So if that, that might not mean anything to you right now, but he is a physician that's done pretty much the most research in this area. And there are only, I think there's 26 people worldwide that are certified in his protocol. Um, and she has studied and it is in the consultation group with Dr. Neil Nathan, who is like my personal hero. Um, he has, he wrote the book toxic. You have to get it if you have, and it's amazing or look him up on. I am in the middle of it right now. 10 out of 10 recommend. <laughs> so, um, she has, she has a really good broad view on everything because again, it's a little bit controversial about like best treatment, like do you need binders? Do you need antifungals? Do you need to treat the sinuses, et cetera, et cetera. There's kind of, there's a lot of intricacies to it, but we're going to talk about like, what about mold can make people so sick? How many houses in the country statistically have mold problems? Um, how many people in the country statistically have the gene that make it so that they can't detox mold well? And I think that you'll probably be surprised by how high those numbers are. I know I was. Uh, so after that, so if, if you are totally new to the community, that's totally fine. You'll see mold and lime talked about together a lot. And the reason for that is, I guess, sneak preview of this one too. This one's with Dr. Kristen Ryman, awesome functional doctor. She went to Stanford School of Medicine, super, super smart. Um, and she she talks about her own journey with Lyme and kind of what brought her to integrative functional medicine. But anyway, Lyme is transmitted by insects. It's not just ticks. So if you've had mosquito bites, flea bites, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, you've probably been exposed to Lyme. And the way that mold interacts with the immune system and suppresses the immune system makes it so something like Lyme that should be kept under control by your immune system because most of us are exposed to it can no longer be kept under control. And so why do mold and Lyme go together? What does that treatment look like? Is there a certain order you should go in? Um, so that's going to be another really, really awesome one. Um, and then to piggyback on that one, we are going to have PJ Harlow of PJ Harlow Wellness talk all about how we apply holistic concepts so we usually think of holistic concepts in the context of health, but how do we apply holistic context concepts to our houses or our living environments? And did you know your house has its own microbiome similar to your gut or your mouth or your sinuses? Um, and how do we promote health in that regard? Um, and, and kind of thinking about testing and what do you do if you find out you're living in mold or what um, 
what remediation strategies or what inspection strategies. So really the first day is gonna be really focused on inflammation and the biggest things we're seeing contribute to that right now, which are chronic infections, environmental toxins, which I will tell you the vast majority of functional integrative doctors will not know about this and they won't know how to treat it. And that's where I went wrong in the six people, or I guess previously five people that I saw that I felt like I was just like on a hamster wheel and wasting a bunch of money. Yeah. So that's day one. So I'll turn it over to you. Yeah. So day one, we thought we'd probably just like cover one topic because it's such a big, heavy topic and kind of give you guys that time to process it all in one day. And then the next day, we're going to be talking about other things that also affect your dizziness and vestibular disorder. So yes, there's a lot about mold on here, but there are also many other topics that we're going to be talking about. So one of the topics we're going to have is Dr. Trupti Gokhani. You may have heard of her because she works at NeuroHealth, which I know a lot of you guys go to, and she rocks, honestly. And we are going to be talking about NeuroVeda. So how Ayurvedic wisdom and Ayurvedic medicine can be applied to neurology. She is a medical doctor. She's absolutely phenomenal. And also she is a headache specialist, all of the things, and also takes a lot of Ayurvedic practices into her practice. I know a patient actually asked me the other day, hey, I'm going to go see Dr. Gokhani. Do you think she's only going to give me Ayurvedic things or is she going to give me traditional medicine things as well? And I think what's so beautiful about the way she practices is the fact that she's able to do both. So we're going to kind of talk about how she does both of those things um, in her practice. We are next going to have uh, Jennifer or Jen Warner, who is amazing. You guys may have seen her, uh, her on Instagram. Uh, Dr. Emily and I talk about her and to her a lot. And she's going to be talking about trauma-informed care for dizziness, which is really, really important because dizziness and vestibular disorders can be slash are really traumatizing for most people. And having a trauma-informed care provider or and or figuring out someone who can help you manage the trauma that may go with your dizziness and vestibular disorder and symptoms are absolutely going to be things that help you reduce the symptoms, help with the cell danger response, help with inflammation. All of these things are related and also, of course, help with the anxiety um, and other symptoms that can come with vestibular disorders. What, one thing I want to just intervene. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of people in this community, and I, I get emails like this literally every single day. My neurologist told me I need to do CBT. Where do I go for CBT? Can you give me CBT? Um, because it's like the buzzword that people know. It's the most studied, blah, blah, blah. However, we're finding that trauma has a huge somatic component. So trauma is getting stuck in the body. And so if you've tried CBT, maybe you've tried ACT, maybe you've tried EMDR, or prolonged exposure or cognitive processing therapy or these other cognitive based therapies and either it hasn't worked or you feel like okay cognitively or like from a mindset perspective maybe I'm doing better but I still feel like I'm being chased by a lion in my body that's where somatics come in and Jen is amazing with that and so I think we're going to touch on a lot of that so even if you feel like, oh, I've done this before, like maybe it wasn't that helpful for me, you're really going to want to listen to this one because I think you'll find a lot of information about things that might have been missing for you. I totally agree with that. And I also get emails about CBT all the time of like, I need to do CBT. It is the way. CBT and VRT, that's all I'm going to do. And like, I'm going to cure my vestibular disorder. And the two of us, I'm going to speak for you, <laughs> Please are do. here to tell you. That, that is not the end all be all of vestibular treatment. And for the love of God, we are begging people to open their minds to other options because we see people get better all the time, but CBT and VRT can be awesome components of, of, of that. But let me tell you, it ain't it. That is not the only thing. And it drives me up the wall. So, I get that's how we're also trained. So it's not. Really yeah. Fun. I mean, you'll see, like, if you look in the literature, like the combination mm -hmm. of CBT and DRT. So it makes sense about why people would be talking about that. Um, however, I think that treatment of chronic dizziness is a science, but it, a huge component of it is an art as well. And clinically, straight up CBT, I have not found that to be the 
not the most helpful thing for people at all. I actually have found it to be sometimes invalidating of people's experiences. Um, so I think it's important to look much, much more holistically and from a trauma informed perspective. I totally agree. Totally agree. So if you're like, but I've tried it, let's run it back and do it again. Okay. <laughs> the next one is uh, Dr. Sarubala, who is a naturopathic doctor who I also tag on Instagram a lot because I love her. I also love her husband. They are like a serious power couple. They're great. He does concussion, um, Dr. Mark Heisig, and then she does hormones and she rules the hormone world. Honestly, in my book, like she is the queen. So I absolutely love her. And we're really excited to have her talk about just hormone health in general. We're going to go over like, what are the hormones? Why do they matter? We're going to go over, do I need a Dutch test? Do we're going to go over what are things that I can look for without testing um, that might be helpful for me if I'm having trouble with my periods, if I have a history of heavy periods, of infrequent periods, of irregular periods, all of these things, am I ovulating, am I not? All of these things affect your dizziness. And I get a question, probably as often as you get a CBD question, I get the question of do why does this happen cyclically? Every time I get my period, I get more symptoms. Every time I ovulate, I get more symptoms. That is, there's a giant connection there. And a lot of people follow that question up with, and my doctor says that it shouldn't happen. And I'm like going to like shake someone because or, it, or my doctor says, here's birth control on this issue. Yeah. Right <laughs> Look, birth control is amazing to control birth. It's great at it. Honestly, great. It does it's not. not <laughs> it does. <laughs> it is not solving your hormone problems. I was put on birth control in high school like most of us were because I frankly was a lunatic around mm -hmm. that period my mom was like I don't know what to do with her my doctor was like here's birth control and then I was like oh, I feel great you come off of it and you still have the same problems you did in high school because mm -hmm. it doesn't solve the problem it just manages your hormones because it makes you your body think you're pregnant basically right and and, some of them, not all of them but right and then you have to also consider big picture like and this is where it goes back to day one so I feel like none of these things can be taken by themselves everything should be taken sort of as a whole but like how does how does taking birth control how does your liver health affect that how do your detox abilities affect that like synthetic hormones are hard on the body and so I think maybe will help you sort of put some pieces together um with these talks. Absolutely. And speaking of detox pathways, we're <laughs> going to be talking to geneticist Natalie Sampson, who I love. I am also, I'm like literally obsessed with all of these people. They are amazing <laughs> at what they do. I'm so excited. Natalie Sampson is a geneticist and we are going to be talking about how environmental impact of genes and dizziness affect your body, why they matter, what epigenetics are, and how your body's detox pathways work. There's a super hot topic in the world right now of what is the MTHFR gene and do I have a problem with it? But she is going to explain to us why the MTHFR gene, it matters, but why it's not the end-all be-all because there's other parts in that pathway that could be broken. And you could have a totally normal MTHFR gene and an abnormal MTRR gene, for example, which is part of that methylation pathway. And that whole pathway can still be broken and you could have problem methylating things, but your MTHFR is fine. And so people will be like, oh, you're going to be fine, but you're not. And it matters. So we're going to be talking about those types of detox genes, other types of detox genes. Uh, if you are more, more, more susceptible to mold uh, in your body, things like that. So she's going to talk to us all about genes and epigenetics, which is how, again, your environment affects your genes. She's really cool. And then last but not least is Isabel Smith, who is a functional dietitian. And we are going to be talking about, do you need to change your diet? Um, how does your gut health affect your whole body why does your gut health matter what are things you can do to improve your gut health and I believe and that is all time one, yeah I want to just jump in really quick on that one too one thing that we're going to be talking about is elimination diets and yes. this is a super hot topic mm -hmm. lots of very very strong beliefs on this one on both mm -hmm. sides mm -hmm. so we're going to be talking about 
who is appropriate for elimination mm -hmm. diets, who is not, if you do an elimination diet, how to do that so that you don't get more food sensitivities, you don't wreck your gut, your nervous system doesn't get super, super mm -hmm. like in a fear cycle, which is what happens a lot in this a community. Lot. Um, and again, I'm yeah. not saying I'm opposed to them. I think it's been very helpful for me, but I have fallen into the, all of the pitfalls that I just mm -hmm. mentioned. And mm -hmm. so I think having someone on board who is very familiar with all of these things, with hormones, with gut health, with mold, with Lyme, she's been through this whole journey herself, not from a vestibular perspective, um, but she's a really, really a wealth of knowledge and will be a great resource. Yeah. I'm also obsessed with her. I, she is such a good follow on Instagram, if nothing else, like I love these people. If you cannot tell, I am so excited for this year. This is obviously the inaugural year. Um, and we are beyond thrilled to have gotten the speakers that we have. We're really excited for you guys to attend. Like we cannot stress this enough. It is October 12th and 13th of 2024. So this year, the presale is going on right now. It started yesterday, August 5th. Today's the 6th. If you're listening to this on Tuesday, and then it goes through the 18th on the 19th at midnight eastern time you the price is going to go up so we highly recommend buying it during the presale so if you're listening to this today or until august 18th 2024 you are going to get it at the presale price the price for the weekend only so if you want to just come watch it live uh not have access to it after sunday then you can buy the Just Live, which is $49, which is incredible price for all of these speakers. And then on Sunday, um, or on, I'm going to edit that. Mm. Then the, the price for the live plus six months of the replay is $99 during presale. Then on the 19th at midnight, Eastern time, is when the price goes up to $99 for the live weekend, $149 for the live plus the replay. And that will be the price until the summit is over. And then you could buy the replay after for even more. So buy it now is my point. <laughs> one, one other thing to mention is that for people that buy during pre-sale only, so during the week, the 5th to the 18th, you will be entered into the what we're calling epic giveaway. Um, and when we say <clears throat> epic, it really is epic. Like, I don't think I've seen this good of a giveaway ever on Instagram. So we have multiple air purifiers. We have um, branch basics cleaning. We have force of nature cleaning. We have blisslets, acupressure bands. We have supplements. We have... Well, Literally everything you can imagine. There are everything from multiple cleaning supplies to multiple air purifiers yeah. is an unbelievable giveaway. And if you want to check out all of the things on it, um, the link is in the show notes to the page where like all the information is. Yeah. So to enter the giveaway, you have to buy during pre-sale. You'll get a welcome email and you have to take the survey and the welcome email. Yes. And then, um, Madison and I will be posting on the 12th, I believe on Instagram. If you comment on that, like share, that will get you extra entries. Yes. Yes. We are literally so excited. If you have any questions about this whatsoever, please send either of us a DM um, and we will get back to you. Emily is at Dr. Emily Kostalnik. I am at the Vertigo Doctor on Instagram. Anything else? And that's it. I think that's it too. I'm really excited. Me if you can't too. tell, like this is not fake. Like I'm actually, we've been talking <laughs> about this for a year now. Yeah. And we finally made it happen. It's happening. It's going to be amazing. Do not miss out on this. Don't yes. miss out. Seriously. Yeah. Don't. Come. We'll see you there. All right. See ya.